I don't normally uh, do videos about what's going on behind the scenes with my gravity driven generator project because you know that sometimes that can be a little lengthy and boring but I want to share a few things with you on what actually happens when these types of projects are being put together you know is it just shoot from the hip and hope it all works out um, and the answer to that is no it's actually quite a bit of research and things that have to go into it to make these kind of projects come together um, if, if you watch my last video then you remember that I talked about how I was going to get uh, restarted on this this project and I cleaned a few things up took off the aluminum plate that was for another project that I was just using and so now I just want to share with you a little bit about uh, how to move forward and what am I doing moving forward so what you're looking at here on this piece of paper that I printed out this is this is what we call a, a one-way sprag also could be known as a one-way freewheel a roller clutch, roller sprag. In America, it's often called a sprag clutch. Those are different types of names you often see um, assigned to this type of device. Okay, um, this the one that I'm interested in, and I haven't finalized this yet, but some form sprag. Uh, form sprag is a company uh, here in the U.S. Um, they're worldwide too, but mostly they do U.S. sales. And this is just a model number that I'm, I've been looking at. So the, the, there are di many different types of um, sprag clutches, uh, but these are the most common overrunning, backstopping, and freewheel. Now the way this works is, this is called the outer race, okay? And you can see there's bolt holes here. And this is where, where I would mount a sprocket. And then in the inside, this is called the inner race, and that's actually where the shaft would go, okay? So if you can imagine, it'd be kind of like that, right? The shaft goes through there, okay? It would go in, in place of where you're seeing this sprocket holder right here, right? That gets replaced with this, okay? And a chain would run to the sprocket, of course, from up there. and. In my last video, I talked about the colliery wheel, okay, and so this this device, the, what, what, the way it works is the sprocket is attached to the outside. When the weight is falling, whichever way, there's only one way that this device locks. And what I mean by lock is the outer race and the inner race lock together. So as the sprocket's turning the outer race, it would lock internally, there's a lock, and the inner race turns with it. Okay, and it's hard to tell in this video, but there's a little keyway right here, right there. Okay, and that keyway locks to that keyway right here. Okay, a little bit better there, I think, with the lighting. Okay. So just like the sprocket holder right now has a, a key, inside here is a keyway, and they match up to this keyway. And the key, which is just a piece of rectangular material, keeps them locked together, okay? So this device also has a keyway right here. So that would lock this device, the entire device, to that shaft, okay? So when, it, when the weight is falling, right, when the weight is going down, which would be about three or 400 pounds, when the weight is falling, the, it turn, the chain, which is attached to the, to the big colliery wheel up top, would drive a chain or drive this other sprocket on the shaft I just showed you, and it would turn this outer race, and it would lock internally to the inner race, and they would turn together, so the shaft would turn too, okay? And that shaft would turn, okay, turns, okay, like that. And there would be a sprocket here, and the chain goes down to the gearbox down there, okay. And that drives the entire system through the different axles here all the way to the permanent magnet alternator down there, okay, the PMA. 
So when it's driven in one direction, a locking direction, okay, both the inner and outer rays turn together. When you turn the sprocket in the opposite direction, then it's called a freewheel, meaning the outside will turn, but the inside will stay stationary. Now that's really important because once the weight falls all the way down on this gravity-driven generator, when we start to wind the weight back up, we don't want to have to drive, we don't want to have to work against the gearbox, right? Because this gear ratio on this gearbox is very high. Trust me when I tell you, you could not physically use human strength to lift the weight if you're trying to drive the gearbox at the same time. Not going to happen. As you got to remember, three or 400 pounds was used to drive the whole system. So we're not going to work against three or 400 pounds. We want to just be able to lift the weight back up through some leverage techniques, which we're, you're, you, we're using the, uh, we're using that boat winch over there, which has, I, I can't remember what the gear ratio is, eight to one or something, okay? And if we need to go bump it up, we will. So I wanted to show you what, you know, some of the things that go on behind the scenes, the, the, the organization of parts and how they get integrated, okay? So there, there are other ways to do this to, where we wouldn't use a sprag clutch, okay? But a sprag clutch is very, very handy, very useful, okay? It really makes a big difference. Now these sprag clutches, they can get expensive, but I'll see what I can find. Maybe I can find one on the cheap, and um, that'll certainly be good for the pocketbook, for the wallet, okay? Let me just briefly talk about some of the components that need to come together to put the, the winding wheel together. Or in this case, we're calling a colly, collary wheel. This is really hard to pronounce for me, but it, whatever. So a hub is needed. Then there's an axle that's going to go with the hub. And of course, we need bearings to hold the axle. And we need a way to mount the sprockets. Okay. So you'll notice this is a kind of a rusty piece of steel plate underneath here. Now I won't use this exact piece because this is a little too rusted out, but it'll be something like that. That steel plate, something similar to that, that I'm going to cut the hub out of. It's just going to be two rectangular pieces and I'll drill a hole through the pieces and put my axle through there. Okay. And the axle might be something as simple, something like this, a piece of pipe, okay? Now this happens to be stainless. I don't know if I'm gonna use stainless, but a piece of pipe, okay? So the pipe would go through a hole in this, in this, in this steel plate, okay? Go right through the hole. And then another plate would be over here on top, okay? And it'll just slide over, I'll drill a hole in that, and the plate will go over that. So you have a plate on the bottom of the pipe and a plate on the top of the pipe. And then the pipe itself will sit in bearings. Okay. And then before I get that far, I'm going to have to do some welding, right? I'm going to have to um, cut this two, two steel plates to exact dimensions to each other, figure out a way to weld them together. It's going to be basically a box, right? And then eventually I'm going to weld the the pipe to the hub or to the steel plates. So they'll so both the plates and the pipe will move together. Whenever they rotate, they all rotate together. Okay, and just the bearings on the outside, right, is how this entire hub will rotate. Will be sitting in bearings, and those bearings will be mounted somewhere in a new structure I'm going to put together. Right. And the, the windy wheel is going to be a pretty big wheel It'll be up there near the ceiling. And just a preliminary measurements are, and some mathematics I did to get the torque and RPMs figured out. 
um, thinking about a, about a 48 inch or a four foot wheel in diameter. Okay. I'll have to crunch some more numbers to see how that works out, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. So those, those are some of the components that go on behind the scenes to make this stuff happen. Okay. Now these aren't the exact components that I'm going to use. I just kind of pulled them off my supply bin uh, just to show you. Now, once the cowrie wheel is actually designed and put together and fabricated, the outside of the wheel is going to need some flat piece to make the circle, right? It's going to be a big four-foot circle, big, huge four-foot circle. So it'll be something like this. This is too thick a material, but I'm just giving you an idea. I'm going to have to spend some time getting some thinner material, material and bend it to the right arc for the top or the perimeter of the wheel. And the reason that's needed is because the cable's got to sit somewhere. Right? If you imagine this is the outside of the wheel right here, the cable's actually got to sit on the top of that. And they'll probably weld some vertical pieces here or 90 degrees to this piece, right? So the cable can't slide off the top, right? We want the cable sliding off. Okay, so I hope you guys um, got a little better understanding of kind of what goes on behind the scenes when parts are sought after and the thought process to make all this happen. These are just some of the components that are going to be necessary to put this together. So I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll keep you guys posted on, on where we're headed from there. Okay, thanks for watching. You know, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because it makes a big difference for me and thumbs up on the video, guys. All right, thanks. Talk to you soon.